A year ago today, I joined the payments team at LinkedIn. One of the first tasks I had was to finagle with the payment transaction routing platform. One of our third parties found a new input dimension that could possibly improve approval rates. Our data scientists were really interested in it, and so I began working. However, as I did my code, I thought, why isn't this problem solved by one of the Bay Area's locally sourced, organically grown payments platforms? And you know, as problems are with this industry, there are a lot of nuances when it comes to scale. Today, I'd like to share some of the learnings I've had while working with the payments transaction routing platform at LinkedIn, what payment transaction routing is, why we need to uh, solve this problem, and how we've approached it. So LinkedIn's global vision is to power, uh, to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. For payments, that means our charter would be to power every purchase of every product by every person in every place and to make the process effortless. To figure out how payments transaction routing helps fulfill this vision, let's take a quick look at the checkout flow. For the purposes of payment transaction routing, we can divide the checkout flow into three steps. One is the intent to order where a member um, picks up a LinkedIn premium subscription and places it in the, into their cart and navigates to the purchase page. Next is the confirmation of the intent to order, where the member enters their payment and billing information and consents to a payment request. Finally, the order gets approved. LinkedIn forwards this purchase request to one of our payment service providers, and ideally, this request is successfully processed. Now, what we really care about is the difference between step two and three. This is the number of orders confirmed over the number of orders approved is the approval rate, which is one of our true north metrics. Now, outside of the usual suspects of fraud and user error, the approval rate is greatly influenced by transaction routing. To get a little bit deeper into that, let's dive into transaction routing. Now, I feel like transaction routing uh, serves one purpose, and that is to make sure that every valid transaction has the best chance of getting approved. Let's uh, go through some of the entities before we walk through this diagram. First, we have our member. Let's name him Jimmy Jobseeker. Then we have the order he's making. In this case, he's purchasing a LinkedIn premium subscription. Next, we have a payment service provider. Now, a payment service provider largely consists of three parts. One is an API gateway. Next is a set of acquirers that partner with the payment service provider, which helps us acquire funds from our customers. And lastly is a set of payment processors that allow transacting against certain payment schemes. Now, a payment scheme is a set of rules, regulations, and infrastructure necessary for issuing new payment methods for that scheme, such as credit cards or digital wallets, as well as processing payments against the scheme. Finally, we have issuers. And these itch issue payment instruments. For example, if you have a Chase Freedom uh, credit card, the issuer for that card is Chase Bank, and the payment scheme for it is the Visa network. Now let's walk through this diagram. Jimmy Jobseeker decides to confirm his purchase of a LinkedIn premium subscription. He decides to put in his Visa debit card's billing information. LinkedIn takes this information and dispatches a request against one of our payment service provider's payment gateways. This information contains information about which acquirer we would like to use to acquire funds, as well as which payment scheme we would like to try to transact the funds against. If all goes well, the payment processor is able to move funds from the issuer to LinkedIn's acquirer. Now, a lot of things can go wrong during this process. For example, if we choose the wrong payment service provider, they may not have a payment processor that can handle the scheme that we selected. Alternatively, if we choose the wrong acquirer, they may not have great enough relations with the issuing bank, and the issuing bank can decline the charge both of these lower our approval rate and negatively impact the customer experience. They just want their premium subscription. Let's try to give it to them. 
So as LinkedIn grew, this problem became more and more difficult as we were integrating with more and more payment, processor, uh, payment service providers. In the beginning, for the first half of LinkedIn's life, we've only had one payment service provider. That was PayPal. This largely bootstrapped our payment, um, payment infrastructure. However, tying ourselves to one payment service provider had its own faults. If PayPal had unscheduled debt downtime, no one on LinkedIn could make a purchase. Additionally, our global charter was to power every member of the economic workforce. This is a bit hard when not every member could be part of PayPal. So we've integrated with many strategic payment service providers since then. A lot of these helped us win regionally. They had better local acquire relations, and we've noticed that every time we've in integrated with a regional payment service provider, our approval rates for that region went up. However, with more payment service providers, the logic became increasingly complex. At this point, the code, uh, the logic was still in code. Every time a change needed to be made, an engineer needed to be contacted, and deployments needed to happen. And not a happy place to be. So we introduced Project Router, which largely solved this problem for us. Now, Project Router at its heart is a rules engine. It takes a set of inputs and generates a payment transaction route. These inputs can largely be categorized into three categories. First is information about the payment instrument. For example, this could be what kind of card scheme that payment instrument is. Next, we have information about the product that's being purchased. Maybe it's a subscription product. Maybe it's a one-time purchase. Maybe it's the first time a subscription product is purchased. These are all important for payment transaction routing. Finally, we have the member metadata. This contains things like the user's country, as well as their experimentation profile, which tells, the, tells us which experiments the, the member is eligible for when we perform payment transaction routing experimentation. Let's go through a couple sample routes. In this case, the payment router decided to make the following. First, try routing against our primary Adyen, and then try routing against a secondary processor. We've noticed that when we introduce a fallback processor, our approval rates goes up, even if the first processor declines. So we've, we've tried to have a fallback processor for all regions where we can make it happen. In this case, the router generated the information by using information from the payment instrument, such as bin information, which we get from a lot of third-party providers. In this case, it tells us that it's a debit card from Visa, as well as member metadata. In this case, it's an Australian member. This might be a rule that signifies if there's a Visa debit card transaction in Australia, we'll route it as follows. There are additional benefits to doing payment transaction routing and more complications when cards get more difficult. In, for some cards, for some debit cards, they can also be transacted against EFT networks. And recently, um, pinless debit was allowed for e-commerce um, transactions. In our case, this allowed us to scan our bin information, determine if a card is pinless, trans, uh, pinless debit eligible, and route against two separate networks with the same gateway. When doing this, we've noticed significant approval rate increases with our transactions. I'd like to walk through a bit of the components of Project Router. At its heart, we use the Jules Rules Engine. We wanted to make the rules very simple. No forward chaining, no backward chaining. This was because the primary people working on these rules were not engineers. We also created an admin web app for business rule development this allowed a CI-CD process to be present there. Additionally, we had a rule validator, which allowed us to validate um, the behavior of these rules against a series of test inputs. Also, I'd like to talk about the data pipeline used for Project Router. Every route that's generated gets piped into Kafka as a tracking event. If the route cannot be successfully generated, it immediately goes to our incident response platform, which notifies our on-call, and the rules are on, on production are rolled back to the last stable variants. 
every route that gets generated gets stored in our routing and payment transaction databases. And every time a payment, um, so this along with every time a payment is transacted successfully is captured by our change data capture software and um, piped into some Hadoop file storage system. Everything in our Hadoop file storage system is data warehoused and anonymized, so all PII is scrubbed. However, it's still enough for our data scientists to perform analysis and determine insights. From my, ex from, uh, my experiences working on this platform, I've come up with the following learnings. Number one, be willing to try new and unfamiliar things. Few companies operate at this scale and have this problem, and even fewer shares this, share findings. This forces us to experiment with very novel ideas and constantly try, to, um, constantly try to contact payment service providers to provide different ways of improving our approval rates. Second is data drives discovery and insight. Without collecting this data, we wouldn't know which segments or which regions were performing poorly. Additionally, without collecting data on our experiments, we wouldn't know which integrations actually impacted our approval rates beneficially. Finally, relationships are key. We often rely on our partners to provide us with new avenues for transaction routing. For example, I think uh, one of our PMs recently flew to India to talk to some of our issuers as our debit card transactions against a lot of the banks were performing extremely poorly. They suggested some changes to how, what metadata we send on our transactions, and that doubled our approval rates for debit card transactions in India. Hopefully, I provided a window into some of the challenges that we face in payments for LinkedIn. Thank you.